How, I know obviously you've talked to the kids over yeah. the years, of course you have, but what does it make you feel like when you see them talking on camera for the first time? I feel really emotional actually, because it's the first time I sort of heard it from their, their side publicly, if you like, so it's, it, it does feel quite emotional. Rather than talking directly to you about it? Yes. Are you um, proud of them? Oh, immensely, immensely. I'm, I'm so glad that they're just ordinary people, you know, after such trauma and shock. Their, their lives could have taken all sorts of roads and actually they've just kept completely ordinary. And that's testament to you bringing them up. I, you know, I'm sad to say that their dad is no longer around, but it must have been a difficult 17 years. It hasn't been easy. It has, certainly hasn't been, you know, all um, flowers and butterflies. It's been difficult at times. We've tried to just let it happen naturally for the children. I don't try and force anything on them. Mm. No matter what they're feeling or what they're doing, I don't try and force issues. I don't force them to speak. Um, I, we did do counselling for a little bit in the early days, but it was too soon, it was too raw. And that's up to them. As they get older, they can make those decisions for themselves. Charlotte was only five at the time her older sister uh, was taken, but the boys were that bit older and they, they remember were. it. Yes. And it's difficult for them. It's difficult for them and it's really difficult to watch, isn't it? I mean, it's just so emotional. And it was seconds, you know, there was nothing anybody could have done that day. If, if I had, I had beat myself up for years about not being in the field with them. But actually, I came to terms a long time ago with the fact I couldn't have stopped it from happening either. And that, that took a long time to get to. Because Luke, even now, beats himself up. You yeah. said you beat yourself up, but really there's only one person who did something wrong here. And yeah, it wasn't of any of you. No, it wasn't. And he has no part in our lives, thank God, so, you know we try and move on from that. Yeah, I know, I know you don't like to refer to him by name, so we won't, but what do you think of him now? I don't, I honestly don't. But in the book that you've written, which is letters to Sarah year on year, in the past seven, over the past 17 years, you do refer to him and the realization that he wasn't a monster. What did you think? I think that was the first time in court that I ever saw him and that was just a plea hearing. You know, I didn't know anything about courtrooms or, or court processes then. I didn't realise that a plea hearing was literally just somebody stood up and said guilty or not guilty. You know, and there was kind of a big, um, you know, there was a big fear about seeing him for the first time. And I'd made him into some monster in my head. I was, you know, being sick before the court case. I was being sick before I saw him because I had, had so much power over my life and my children's lives. And what about the effect it's all had on your life because until this point you were probably going off in a different direction you had hopes and aspirations and clearly Sarah's murder is what's defined your life what's that like to to come to terms with well all my children define my life you know it doesn't matter whether they're here with me or not with me they define my life I'm a mother of four children so of course five children now sorry sorry Ellie well yes because we have you have Ellie yes. who Never knew her older sister. No, she didn't. What's it, what's it like for her? Because she's only a teenager now, right? Ellie's just 13, and so we're just going through those, you know, Difficult temperamental times. moments. But having not known Sarah, but known that Sarah is always there... And... It was something that when I got pregnant with Ellie, I was very much aware of. It would be very difficult for anybody to have a sister as famous as Sarah is mm. and not know them, and it's something I always try to be aware of. And so it's, it's, I think it's been harder on Ellie in a lot of ways than a lot of other people because we come from a very small village where everyone knows everyone and, you know, so everyone knows her sister, but she didn't have that physical contact. Mm. And you're absolutely right. Everyone does know Sarah. You see that picture, even if people were relatively young themselves at the time, it all comes flooding back. Of course. The, the media coverage and you having to talk to people like me over the years about it. Has that been difficult? Is that something you've got used to? Is it something you've always thought is important to do to keep Sarah's name there? It was something, it was me carrying on her name really. And it was something, when I came to child protection, I was a mum of five, so I could give it to those that made the laws and those that made the practices and, and the system firsthand, how this wasn't working for those on, you know, those on the front face of, parenthood, yeah. what they were doing wasn't helping and wasn't hurt, wasn't uh, changing anything. And I know, of course, your campaign to get Sarah's law 
enshrining law. It took 10 years and yes. eventually it did and that has, has made a difference. But even so, here we are, 17 years on, we're talking about it and you're happy to talk about it and write about it in a book as well. What, what's the motivation for that? Is it to keep her fresh in your memory? It's to keep her fresh, it's to update people. People got so involved when Sarah went missing, you know, everybody did. Everyone was looking for her. They looked in their sheds, they looked in their back gardens, you know, everywhere people went, they had her in her mind. And, you know, we didn't have social media then, but I'm sure it would have gone worldwide. I mean, Sarah's statue was stolen from her school just a couple of years ago and that went absolutely viral because people remember Sarah and they were just, you know, disgusted that anyone could do that. As it turned out, they weren't stealing it because it was Sarah's st statue, they were stealing it because it's a... Made out of something expensive. Made out of something expensive, mm -hmm. yeah, and it was just chances. We haven't unfortunately got much more time, uh, Sarah, but I do want to ask you what life is like now because obviously you've got the kids and you've got four grandchildren as well and are you able to, after all this and all this time, enjoy life a little bit? Yeah, I am. I have peace. I found peace. I found peace with what happened. I found my way through it. My children have. They're surviving. They're well-rounded adults. They're doing a good job at life. So, you know, I, and I'm happy. Why wouldn't I be happy? I've got four wonderful grandchildren and all my children are gorgeous. We're pleased to hear you're happy. And thank you so thank much you. indeed for coming in to talk to me. You're very welcome.